What's up, everybody, and good morning. Welcome in to another episode, the Wednesday edition of the 22-Minute Drill with SEC Mo. Now, Razorback Nation, let me ask you a question. How much longer can Jaquindon Jackson keep this pace? Week after week, he's been the heart and soul of this Arkansas offense, grinding out tough yards, pushing through defenses, and piling up touchdowns. But here's the reality. No matter how talented they may be, no back can carry a team alone for an entire season, especially in the SEC. The question we need to answer today is simple. Who's stepping up behind him? Who's ready to lighten the load, give Jackson a break, and keep this run game rolling? Depth is everything in this league, and right now, we're about to find out who can shoulder the responsibility. Let's dive in and see what this running back room is really made of today on the 22-minute drill with SEC Mo. Let's go. All right, so let me go ahead and paint the picture for you guys. Jaquinnon Jackson has been the backbone of this offense, leading the charge with 69 carries for 472 yards. He averages 6.8 yards per carry. He's also scored eight touchdowns. He's showing he's not just a workhorse, but a game changer. But how much longer can he keep this up? Running backs in the SEC often wear down by November, and Jackson isn't just carrying the rock, he's carrying the team's identity. When your lead back is averaging over 20 carries per game, grinding out those tough yards, you've got to wonder, who's going to step up to lighten that load? So this is the first question that I wanted to pose. And let me go ahead and get to my screen. This is the first question that I wanted to pose because at this point, Jaquindon Jackson has been absolutely lights out for this offense. Um, Taylor Green is actually the second leading rusher on the team right now, but Jaquindon Jackson is the, he's the bell cow. He's the workhorse. He's everything that you want to call him. But how long can his body hold up to that type of that type of impact every single week? Um, that's the major question. We have a running back room that has talent. Uh, unfortunately, Rashad DeBinion is actually suspended indefinitely. Um, so we don't know what his future is going to look like with the Razorbacks. But we have Rodney Hill. We have Braylon Russell. Uh, we have a few other guys back there, but... The limelight has been completely on Jaquindon Jackson in this offense. And the major question for this morning is, how long can he hold up? How long can he, how long can he maintain that pace? Because that's the major issue. In the SEC, you're going to need multiple backs. You don't know who's going to get hurt week to week. So you have to have someone at RB2 to kind of lighten that load. The SEC is probably one of the deepest conferences that you can possibly think of. Uh, as far as running backs are concerned. Even when you think back to early success before the Bobby Petrino era and the Houston Nutt era when we had Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, Peyton Hillis, all those guys, they formed a trio that was pretty unstoppable in the SEC. Then you had Niall Davis um, and Broderick Green when, and during the Bobby Petrino era, but then you also look at the duo during the Bielema era of uh, Alex Collins and Jonathan Williams. Both of those were two thousand yard backs they were two thousand yard backs on the same team so I think that we're definitely gonna have to dig deep in the cupboard to actually figure out what this Arkansas team needs to do to find that solid number two so let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper in the next segment let's go And we're back for the second segment. Who is the solidified RB2 for this Arkansas football team? Who? Um, I mean, this is actually where the plot thickens for me because we don't actually know who's going to be that solid number two. We have Braylon Russell, who's shown flashes. He's got 13 carries for 47 yards with two touchdowns, but he's only averaging 3.6 yards per carry. Is that due to a lack of carries? I don't know. But the question is, is he ready to take on a bigger role? Or is there someone else waiting to emerge, like Rodney Hill, for example, who has 
14 carries for 71 yards with a solid 5.1 yard average per carry. He's shown promise, but he only has one rushing touchdown. Can he actually be trusted to give Jackson the breather that he needs? Death matters in the SEC, as we all know, especially at running back. Arkansas is going to need more than one horse in the backfield to survive this season. So who's ready to lighten the load for Jackson? That's the second major question that I have for you guys this morning because this is an important topic. As much as we're looking for a number two option at wide receiver, we're also trying to find that number two option at running back. I think that we do have depth in that room, but I just don't feel that the carries are being spread out the way that they should so that we can actually have somebody emerge. Um, In the UAPB game, I think that Rodney Hill got a very, very hefty load in comparison to what he's gotten at Oklahoma State and UAB, also at Auburn. Uh, because we actually saw in the Auburn game that Braylon Russell is is actually starting to emerge as a possible number two back. He's got a great build. He's got a great frame to be a freshman running back. I think he's around 245 pounds or 250 pounds at around six foot one, six foot two, maybe even taller than that. And um, Rodney Hill is a scab back. He's a little bit smaller. And Jaquindon Jackson is the combination of everything. But how is Bobby Petrino and Sam Pittman going to have these three backs become the lightning, the thunder, and everything all in combination with each other? That's the major question that I have. I would love to see Braylon Russell get more carries. I would love for Rodney Hill to get more carries in the fact that he he's just a, a scab back. I mean – he also, he's not a, he's not afraid of contact either. Let me just say that. Um, I've been impressed with Rodney Hill. I thought that with the lack of film that he had coming out of Florida State, that it would be a little bit more difficult to actually give a, a proper analysis on him. Um, but after a few games, I've been thoroughly impressed with his ability to, to, to fight through contact, uh, to get extra yardage. Um, and his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield when it's accurate, of course. Um, But he's a threat. I just feel that his role is going to be more so in the passing game because he's more of a passing threat than he is in every down back. But I feel like Braylon Russell is the key. I feel like if we can unlock Braylon Russell in this offense, I think, man, I think that he and – uh, Jaquin and Jackson are gonna do great things, man. When there was one play in in the Auburn game where he caught the ball out ball out of the backfield, and he made contact with the defender near the line of scrimmage, but he started to drag maybe two or three more defenders with him for about two or three yards, and that's the type of back that we need behind Jaquin and Jackson to to add that power, to add that to wear defenses down for the most part because Jaquin and Jackson is a physical runner, but Braylon Russell is also. And then when you got him worn down, you hit him with the lightning, the speed. You you throw in Rodney Hill for a change of pace. I think that if Arkansas can, can figure out how to get that combination of guys together for the rest of this season, I think that we're going to have something really, really special. Um, I'm looking forward to this Texas A&M game to see how our offense continues to evolve with Taylor Green uh, adding to that that mix because he's the second leading rusher on the team. We, we, we can't forget that Taylor Green is a dynamic runner, but I want to see how this running back room begins to evolve as this season goes on. So, hey, let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper into the durability of Jaquindon Jackson in the next segment. So go grab a cup of coffee, go grab your newspaper, Go do whatever you got to do. Go take the trash out, whatever you got to do. Just don't miss the next segment right here on the 22-Minute Drill with SEC Mo. Let's go. All right, and we are back. 
Now, we've already talked about the Quentin Jackson's workload. We've already talked about the possibilities at RB2. But how long can he maintain this pace? Like, we've already seen the story before. SEC running backs who carry the weight of the team early in the season start to feel the wear and tear as the season grinds on. Jackson's 69 carries for 472 yards show his ability to push through defenses, but the question is, how long can he maintain that? If Jackson goes down, knock on wood, of course, we do not want that to happen. I keep saying that. But who's stepping in to fill the gap? Tyrell Reed. Even Tyrell Reed, I haven't even brought Tyrell Reed up. Tyrell Reed Jr. up yet. But he's actually shown glimpses uh, with five, five carries for 28 yards, and he averages 5.6 yards per carry. But is that enough to keep this offense going? And let me dig a little bit deeper into Tyrell Reed because Tyrell Reed is a very interesting story. Not necessarily a story, but he's an interesting back. The last time that we saw Tyrell Tyrell Reed was in the UAPB game. I bet you guys don't even remember him. But he's a really, really solid back. He's short. He's stout. He's, He's almost like the shorter version of Braylon Russell, to be honest with you. But I feel like he hasn't even had the chance to sniff the field. What does he look like? What would he look like in a situation where we're down Jaquindon Jackson and we have Braylon Russell, uh, we have Rodney Hill, and then Tyrell Reed? I feel like he's a solid option. I mean, I don't want to beat the dead horse of asking the question, how long can Jaquindon Jackson hold up? Because I I think he's going to be able to hold up just fine. But there's always that burning question in the back of your mind because we have a lot more games left. We've only played five games. I mean, how many? We got UAPB, we've had Oklahoma State, we've had UAB, and then we've had Auburn. So we've played four games. We played a third of our season, guys. So we have eight more games to play this season. So I'm ready to find out who that solid number two is going to be. I'm ready to see how deep our running back room really is. If we're going to lean on our running game, I want us to go all in. I don't want there to be any stone left unturned for this offense because if the running game is what's really going to get Taylor Green going, we need to find out how we can get as many running backs on the field as possible. If we can get Jaquindon Jackson to 100 yards or 100 plus yards, we need to get somebody else to 60 or 70. We need to get the running back behind them to 50 or 40. You get what I'm saying? I want there to be almost like a stair step to the top of Jaquindon Jackson because We need him to stay healthy throughout the season. We're going to need him for Tennessee. We're going to need him from LSU. We're going to need him for Ole Miss. We're going to need him for for Texas. Those are going to be huge games that are going to be played (laughs) at uh, Donald W. W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville. So we need somebody to step up. We need someone to be that solid number two. I don't know if it's going to be Rodney Hill. I don't know if it's going to be Braylon Russell. I would love to see more Tyrell Reed, but that's going to be on the coaches to decide. But the bigger question is, in comparison, what do other teams look like in the SEC that do have a a, a running back by committee system? It's not all bad. It always works out for the good. So, hey, like I said, if you haven't gotten your coffee yet, if you haven't gotten your newspaper yet, go ahead and do so, and then meet me right back here on the 22-minute drill. Let's go. All right, so we're back for the final segment of the 22-minute drill today. Now, one injury can change the entire course of a season, as we all know. And because this is the SEC, you have to be ready for anything. So what I want to do today is take a look at our next two opponents in Texas A&M and Tennessee to see how their running backs are performing in comparison to Arkansas. So let's go ahead and take a look at Texas A&M and Tennessee real quick. I mean, when you look at them, you see that depth at the running back room is, is vital in the SEC grind. So... Like I was saying before, Jaquinnon is doing a great job for Arkansas, 
But with Jaquin, I mean, but with Rashad DeBinion being suspended indefinitely, we definitely need to develop more depth at the running back position because we, we're down one running back. So let's go ahead and start with Texas A&M. Texas A&M has a starting running back named Le'Veon Moss, and he's been their workhorse. He has 63 yards for 300, I mean, 63 carries for 354 yards, and he averages 5.6 yards per carry. He has three scoring touchdowns, but it's not just Moss who's carrying the load. Their quarterback, Marcel Reed, has rushed for 217 yards in 30, on 32 carries, and he averages a staggering 6.8 yards per carry. So that's something that we're going to have to watch this weekend as we get into the uh, Texas A&M game. Together, they've actually helped Texas A&M rush for a total of 1,024 yards this season. They're getting contributions from across the board as well, including Amari Daniels, who has 197 yards on 39 carries and two touchdowns. And that's what balance, balanced depth looks like to me. Um, of course, we all know that Taylor Green is the second leading rusher on this team, but we don't have a third running back or a second running back who has at least 197 yards, who even has 39 carries for that matter. I think that Braylon Russell has, what, 17? Let me go back up. I think that Braylon Russell probably has, yeah, uh, Braylon Russell has 13 carries, and Rodney Hill has 14 carries. That's That doesn't even compare to – Amari Daniels, who's the second string running back on Texas A&M's team, who has 39 carries. I mean, do y'all see where I'm going with that? And it's not it's not hampering their production either. I mean, Le'Veon Moss has 354 yards on 63 carries, and that's more carries than Jaquin and Jackson, I believe. So they're still finding balance with how they operate their running back room. And it's very encouraging because that means that Arkansas has a lot of space to maneuver. They have a lot of room to grow in that area. And we definitely have running backs that can carry the load, that can help carry the load. Now let's look at Tennessee, for example. They've got a potent one-two punch in Dylan Sampson and Deshaun Bishop. Sampson has been outstanding with 449 yards on 69 carries averaging 6.5 yards per carry and leading the SEC with 10 rushing touchdowns. Bishop is chipped away and uh, chipped in with 287 yards on 38 carries, boasting an impressive 7.6 yards per carry and three touchdowns. Tennessee's total rushing yards sit at 1,160 yards with contributions from multiple players giving them the kind of depth that Arkansas needs to develop to compete at this level. Now, I wanted to bring up tennis, Texas A&M and Tennessee because those are the next two teams that we play. Uh, Arkansas has been able to kind of, how do I put it, contain the running game, so to say, up to this point because Ollie Gordon was the number running back, number one running back in the nation, but we, we held him to 49 uh, yards, I believe. Uh, it was right under 50 yards or right at 50 yards. But... UAB's running backs gave us a few fits on that first drive of the UAB game. Um, as we look at the Auburn game, we were able to kind of contain their running game. So what are we going to look like when there's a running back by committee? What is it going to look like when there's not one running back that we have to worry about? We have to worry about two or three. Um and those are going to be big questions. We want to be able to offer that same type of threat to our opponents, in my opinion. I feel like Arkansas really needs to consider giving Braylon Russell more touches or Tyrell Reed, or there just needs to be more distribution of the carries, in my opinion. I think that it's also going to help Taylor Green in loosening up the passing game because we know that he struggled throwing the ball, um, and we know that he struggled throwing uh, with accuracy. But what if those running backs can be a security blanket for him out of the backfield, maybe? Um, we'll see. But if Arkansas wants to keep pace with the teams like Texas A&M and Tennessee, we've definitely got to build the same kind of depth, which is what I was alluding to just a minute ago. Right now, Braylon Russell has shown potential, but with just 13 carries for 47 yards, he hasn't proven he can carry the load when Jackson needs a breather. Rodney Hill has 71 yards on 14 carries, which I've already talked about averaging 5.1 yards per carry. 
but he's still not getting enough touches to solidify himself as the go-to RB2. So what is the conclusion, Razorback Nation? I mean, the bottom line is Jaquin and Jackson has been nothing short of amazing and incredible for us. But no one back can do it alone in the SEC, and that's all I'm saying. That's all this show is about. No one person, no one running back can do it all by himself in the SEC. We've seen flashes from Rodney Hill and Braylon Russell, but is that enough to give Jackson the support he desperately needs? With Jackson responsible for nearly half of our 960 rushing yards, we need someone else to step up. Who do you trust to back him up? Who do you trust to back him up? That's what I'm asking you. Who do you trust Razorback Nation to back him up? Is it Braylon Russell? Is it Rodney Hill? Who is it? Is it Russell, like I said? Is it Tyrell Is it Tyrell Reed Jr.? Drop your thoughts down lo- below in the comments and let me know what you think. Let's keep this conversation going. Now, don't forget. Don't forget this. There's another show coming up tomorrow, the Thursday edition. So don't think that this is over. Y'all better get your coffee every morning, get your newspaper every morning, and come right back to the 22-minute drill with SEC Mo. So I want to continue to break down the Texas A&M matchup uh, because this game is going to show a lot about this Arkansas team. Can Taylor Green's dual threat ability unlock the offense? Can Jaquinnon Jackson help unlock the offense? Can Braylon Russell, can Rodney Hill? These are the questions that we have to answer going into this Texas A&M game. So tune in tomorrow, Thursday morning. We're going to get into it again. We're going to have another juicy topic. What is this offense going to look like moving forward? Is this Arkansas offense going to be able to reach its full potential at some point? Those are the big questions that we have to uh, ask on Thursday morning. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys there. So that's going to wrap it up for today's 22-minute drill with SEC Mo. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's it's hump day, man. We're, We're halfway through the week. So, Stay locked in with your guy, man. Stay tuned in with me, and uh, we'll continue to provide high-quality HOG content, man. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in this morning, and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.